This is VirtualBox 6.1, as you can see there. This is on my Linux Mint 20.3 host system. And what we're going to do is install Solus Matei 4.3 into a virtual machine uh, using VirtualBox. So let's begin. So the reason I'm doing this is because uh, when I tried to install Solus 4.3 Matei uh, into a virtual machine, I was having uh, trouble. It would boot up to a, a login screen on the live ISO file. And yeah, none of the passwords that I could think of, like live, soulless, um, password, or even a blank password, nothing would work. So I, uh, I discovered this by playing around a bit. So we're going to call it soulless Linux Mate, Matei. And here in type, we're going to put Linux. And in version, I'm using other Linux 64-bit. Now this is so far this is pretty typical for what I do on this system and we click next I usually give mine I've got 16 gigs of RAM I usually give me virtual machines about 8 gigs uh, you could use as little as 2 I've used as little as 2 you should be fine and then I'm just going to take most of these defaults here to create a, a virtual disk dynamic and I'm going to make it 30 gigabytes and then I'm going to click create uh, so here's our new machine down the bottom. We right click it and we go to the settings. Go to system, processor, I give mine two because this host machine has got four. Go to display, I usually crank this up to 128. And for most of my systems now I have to use either the bottom one there or the top one. But I've found with this, just leave that where it is and tick this enable 3D. Uh, it did work with, uh, with that one as well. I haven't tested beyond that, but you're yeah, just using VMSVGA and enable 3D. That was, um, yeah, as soon as I hit that button there, it was all good. If we go into storage, we can see the virtual CD-ROM is empty. So we'll click on it, click on this little arrow over here and I'm going to choose a disk file and there I've got Solus 4.3 Matei in my downloads directory there we are uh, network you probably won't have to worry about this I, I usually just use bridge because that works for me I don't touch anything in there and I just get rid of the little mini toolbar off the bottom but those last two settings aren't going to matter that much so now we double click it to start it. And control F, right control and the F key takes us out to full screen. You'll see the screen won't be that big in a minute, but at least we'll get up to the live desktop and be able to click the installer. It'll be a little bit tight. Now your system might be different. I, I don't know anything beyond what I'm doing here can't really help you with so it's not much so you can see there's not much room to work with there and the rest of the screen is blanked out I've tried logging out and logging back in but it comes back to this I know with uh, Linux Mint when I went to the 20 series and I was trying to make virtual machines of Linux Mint if I'd logged out from the live session even though I'm not really logged in uh, it would come back full screen but it doesn't seem to work here so we're going to start the installer by clicking on that icon there. So you can see it's a little bit tight. Uh, I'm just going to move this up and across a little bit. And now I can get to the next button. So hopefully yours will be the same. Uh, if not, you could probably even right click the panel and go to its properties and just make it auto hide. It'll give you that little bit extra room too. Why don't we even try that? properties auto hide close there you go so now we've got that little bit extra room so we'll go next uh, finding my location automatically works because I'm on a wired connection there we go and English Australia works for me so this is pretty 
standard procedure. I'm just sort of skipping through most of these defaults. And I'll give it a host name, just something at random. And I'll give myself a username and a name name. It's only the capital letter there that's different. A password. Repeat that password. And now we click add now. And that's just showing us that. And we click next. There's a review of all our settings. So I hit install. We hit OK. And believe it or not, it only takes about was it 154 or 54 uh, by 57 or so that'll be uh, installed in fact I'm gonna properties remove the auto hide because I don't need it so that's just about finished installing already and when it does I'm going to shut shut down and and then we'll remove the uh, live DVD or the .iso file from the virtual machine because this system doesn't or well, isn't for me anyway automatically removing it like Linux Mint does for example uh, so I'm not going to hit restart now I'm just going to hit the X up the top to close the window and now I'm going to shut down and sometimes this sort of just logs out or whatever and sometimes it shuts down so it looks like it's behaving itself so there we are we're back to VirtualBox so let's right click it again and go to its settings and in storage there's the uh, virtual DVD so if we leave that there it'll boot off it again so we want to right click it and go remove attachment and remove and now it's just got the virtual drive virtual hard drive which has got the system installed on it and if we look in display we haven't changed anything in there yet so we leave that like it is until we've run the updates so I'll click OK and we'll start it up again again we're gonna have a small window but it's, a, it's enough to get the job done so that's all that matters now we can log in so this is the actual installed system or a virtual machine installed there you go you just if you just wait for a moment uh, if you're on Wi-Fi obviously you'll have to connect the Wi-Fi there we go security updates available open the software center we click on that and all this happens here we choose update selected And we can see there's, there's nearly a gigabyte there. There's a bit more now, so we hit install on that as well. The dependencies. Put in our password. And we and then we press enter, and then we just wait. This is going to take quite a while. Uh, a gigabyte of downloads won't take that long necessarily on my system. Um, but yeah, this might take, it takes about an hour to do this on this system. So I'll come back a bit later on. Okay, software is up to date. So we can actually close out of there now. I'll close that. Now we're going to shut down. Yeah, this happens a bit sometimes. So let's go quit. Shut down. So there, there's the machine. Now what I'm going to do is clone it. So I just right click and clone. And I'll just call it clone. With the same name but with clone on it. And full clone. That'll only take a couple of minutes. That way all that time that we've just spent waiting for that won't be lost if we um, break something. So we'll pick this up when it's finished. Okay, so the clone's finished. So that's the one we created. Here's our clone. So we'll just work with the clone. We'll go to settings, display. Now we're gonna to go to uh, 
VBOX SVGA, so the bottom option, and no 3D. Okay. And let's start that up and see what it does. Okay, so we've got full screen now. Let's see if we can log in. I think we should be good. It's the panel loading and we're in. Looks like everything's working. All looks pretty good from here. Just, we'll just do a restart. Just to double check. Okay, it does start fast, doesn't it? Even this is a virtual machine running off, off a spinning hard drive on my system. Look at that. I didn't have any of these issues using a, um, a live USB stick on, on the actual hardware of my laptop. But it's just VirtualBox doesn't, uh, doesn't like all this stuff. Or Solus Matei doesn't. The, um, the Budgie, I think I've got Budgie in here somewhere. Solus Budgie, there. Yeah, that was no problem at all. That just installed, just whatever I normally do worked fine. Yeah, the Matei, for whatever reason, wants to uh, behave the way that it does, and that's how I got around it all.